Good evening. Today marked the beginning of the 38th $10,000 buy-in main event. Poker pros, celebrities, and average Americans alike are clogging the hallways over at the Rio. That's right. Today we saw 1,250 people compete in day 1A of the World Series of Poker. And one of those people was our 2006 Card Player Player of the Year, Michael the Grinder Mizraki. Now for winning that event, Card Player paid Michael the Grinder's buy-in into this event. Should be very interesting to see how he does. The day 1A chip leaders so far include two-time bracelet winner Tom Schneider, Dustin Neverwin Wolf, Andrew Black, Lee Markholt, and Victor Ramden. Day 1A short stacks, which we defined as having under 5,000 as of the time of this taping, include Marcel Lusk, Johnny Chan, Mickey Appleman, and C.K. Hua. The World Series of Poker has already come to an end for quite a few established poker pros. Eli Lesra, Josh Arie, Rambaswani, Chris Redslock, and Nick Frangos have already bitten the dust. Now there's no more bracelet events, so that's it for them for this year's World Series. That's an excellent observation, Lizzie. Very good. The Andy Up for Africa tournament hosted by Don Cheadle and Annie Duke was yesterday, and it was incredibly well attended and well received. Dan Shack and Brandon Moran chopped it when it was heads up and both pledged to donate all of their winnings to charities associated with the Annie Up for Darfur tournament. The two of them alone sent over 386000 to these worthy charities. 167 players put up $5,000 each to play in the Annie Up for Africa event. As we showed you yesterday, the field was packed with well-known faces and they all came out to support the cause. The highest celebrity finisher in the tournament was Jason Alexander. He came in 10th place. The last bracelet to be awarded before the main event began went to Eric Seidel in the $5,000 buy-in Deuce to 7 lowball event with rebuys. The runner-up in that event was Chad Brown, and he came by today to talk to Lizzie about playing in that event. Well, you know, Lizzie, I, I, I've had a lot of success in poker, and uh, but one thing that I don't have is a World Series poker bracelet. So one of my goals coming into the World Series this year was to win two bracelets, not one, two. Uh, and uh, I gave myself a couple of chances before last night. I came in 11th in the limit hold'em, took a couple of bad beats at the end, uh, knocked me out of that. And of course, in the no, in the pot limit Omaha high low, I came fifth. I was second chip leader. I was actually in a hand against the chip leader, and everyone else was way below us. And uh, uh, on the turn, I pushed all in. He only had me covered by like 30,000. So if I win this pot, it's like. I'm like a big favorite to win that tournament. Yeah. I was a 3-1 favorite when I pushed in on the turn, and uh, he had to hit a flush. He hit the flush on the river. So uh, that was disappointing. So now we go to last night where I play Eric Seidel, who's a uh, uh, World Series of Poker champion. He's got many bracelets, yeah. uh, great player. And uh, I have to say I had him all in three times, and he had a catch three times. Uh, where I could have won the bracelet, and uh, all I can say is that bracelet is elusive. <laughs> uh, but Eric, uh, Eric is a class act, and I'll tell you what, if there's anyone uh, I don't mind losing to, it's a classy guy like Eric Seidel. So this year, you're the player with the most caches at the World Series of Poker. How, do, how have you kept on your game so well to cash seven times? Well, you know, like I said, I really, I'm a, I'm a goal-oriented type person, and I tell you what, it's not just about poker. I think in life, whatever anyone wants to accomplish in life, to really set goals and to put you know, in place the things that it takes to accomplish those goals really helps you to achieve those things. So I set a couple of high standards. I mean, it's a little, some people might say it's a little ridiculous. Chad, you set goal for two goals, whereas you didn't have any. You know, But I set the bar high so that I would really be focused and motivated. And I didn't accomplish, I mean, I have one chance left to win one bracelet. Uh, but I won't win two bracelets, but I did the best that I possibly could, and as a result of that, I have the most caches of any other poker player for this World Series uh, uh, this year. And uh, I really tried my best. I played my best. I have no regrets. You know, like, I, I don't feel badly today, you know, that I didn't win the bracelet because, you know, looking back, I said, hey, I had Eric Seidel, world-class, great poker player. I had him all in three different times where, uh, you know, Two of the three times he was drawing two cards, I was drawing one. So I was a favorite. Yeah. Both of those times, the other the other one was a coin flip. And, uh, you know, even though the hand I got knocked out yeah, on. I was going to say, tell us about that last time. The hand I got knocked out on, Eric had a uh, big chip lead on me. And I had only, after uh, the pre-flop, after the pre-flop raising call, whatever that was, I think it was 170000 I had 600000 left. I drew one. Eric drew two once again. And uh, in deuce to seven with one draw, I made a nine seven, which is 
a monster. Like, that's like, especially when someone's drawing two, it's almost like a lock that once I yeah. saw I made 9-7, I'm like, oh, I hope he make, I'm actually rooting for him to make a hand. So you can double up. So I could double up, and if I double up, we're about even in chips. So I make a 9-7, Eric actually bets, and I only have, he bet 250, I had 350 left, calling his 250, and I pushed it all in, hoping that he wasn't bluffing, that I get paid off. And Eric said, call, and I'm like, 9-7, and he, he looked, and he turned over his hand, he had a, a rough eight, and I'm like, wow, I guess it's just not meant to be. <laughs> so there's one more bracelet yet to be won at this year's World Series, but it is a noteworthy bracelet, the main event. How are you feeling going into the main event? Well, I feel great, because obviously uh, I've been doing extremely well yeah. in the World Series. I when are you starting? What's your starting day? I start on Sunday. I would have started on Monday, now that they've changed the rules again, I mean, Harris Corporation, I mean, obviously they're, they're doing very well with all their casinos, but they got to, I mean, this is the World Series of Poker, and they, you know, had a whole year to plan. They've had so many, I mean, there were so many things that went wrong with the deuce to seven, you know, there was, uh, they had to stop play because what they were happened? changing. Um, apparently, what happened is, uh, and, you know, me and I think all poker players, look, whatever the rules are, are the rules, and it's the same for The everyone. rules for everyone, yeah. Right. Uh... They had decided before the tournament started, you know, uh, people are going to get blinded off, and uh, if someone uh, bought in uh, late, uh, they would come in with a shorter stack. They would come in with a shorter stack, and then, uh, and uh, and uh, obviously, for people that are going to come in, if that's the rule, because like Andy Block was at my table, Andy sat down like. 15 minutes. He bought in 15 minutes after the tournament started, and he was short 1,800 already. And chips. Yeah. Uh, so now people who bought in like later because the blind structure was so high that you're going through. Uh, they had antes in the first level. Oh, okay. So, so I was going to say, how did he get 1800 right, in 15 right, minutes? Right. That they, makes they sense. They had antes in the first level. So as a result, anyone who was signing up late, Clear they, wouldn't, they wouldn't want to sign up because they would be starting with maybe five thousand because they were signing up late. So of course that doesn't make sense. Uh, but you can't change, like for someone like Andy Block, who signed up 15, got, so I think, you know, what they had decided to do is like, anyone who wanted to sign up, they were going to let them get the full 10, and then of course all the players who signed up uh, late and were short, they're like, are you kidding? If I could have signed up uh, later and I got a full stack, I would have waited. More chips, yeah. So there's, you know, I mean, Harris... Uh, what was the final ruling on the situation? final ruling was, uh, they actually stopped play, stopped the clock, and they called, whoever the tournament directors were in charge of that, called up Jack or called up maybe someone above Jack. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, like me, I really, I, I, I try to, like... As a poker player, you don't want to see controversy when you're I trying to focus. I'm trying to focus, exactly. I, I, I'm like, you know what? It it's doesn't involve you. Up. <laughs> I, it doesn't involve me, and I'm, I'm not, you know, whatever, everyone else is complaining. It's the right mindset. So I'm like, you know what? Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. They, they've been you know, screwing up a lot of different things. Harris, the people who are on the board of Harris really need to, the World Series is something that's a privilege to own. The corporation owns this public company. The, the board needs to really uh, get someone who's the point person just for that to really make this work smoothly. So tell us about your new book that just came out. Well, you know, uh, I have this book that came out. It's called Act to Win in Texas Hold'em Poker. And uh, it's written by uh, myself and Stephen Calamar. He's a German mathematician. He actually has the number one bestseller in Germany. Uh -huh. And uh, we collaborated together on this to come up. And, you know, I used to be an actor, so uh, we have uh, sort of an acting theme. But it's really for beginners or intermediates. It's not for advanced players. Mm -hmm. And it's an easy read to really, uh, with my help, with Stefan, uh, we really try to uh, give you things in more layman's terms so that you understand some of the secrets that made me uh, Player of the Year in 2006. Uh, they're all in here. It's a winning formula. Uh, if you go to... Um, As they, where can they buy it? Well, uh, it's a lot of stuff that's still in the works, but if you go to my MySpace page, you go to www.myspace.com slash chadbrownpoker. Uh, it will give you all the information, keep you up abreast of all the information of how you can buy the book. So now Chad has one more chance to leave the Rio with a bracelet. We'll let you know how he fares in the main event. Earlier today, Rich had the chance to catch up with another player who got this close to a World Series of Poker bracelet this year, Theo Trey. Theo, first of all, it's my absolute pleasure to say congratulations. 
you were fighting, you were heads up in the $1,000 rebuy event for the bracelet. You came in second for over $340,000. First of all, congratulations. 87. First question, 387? Sorry about that. First question is, are you more disappointed or more excited? Uh, it sounds, I don't know, everybody like yells at me, but like it's, it's more disappointing. Like, really? Because yeah. I was that close and all I've been playing for is the bracelet. And, I mean, well, one, it was an extra 360000 you know, but I wasn't even thinking about it. It's the bracelet. And, I mean, the difference between first and second, it might have changed my life, like, you know, for my poker career. So, I don't know. But I got more money to play more events to try now, so. We'll see. Tell us about your situation before this event. I was broke again. I don't know. <laughs> As usual, I don't know. I mean, I, hit, I, I had back-to-back -back final tables at Mandela Bay, and then I tend to lose that money, too. And then, I mean, I just, I don't know, just... Just, what are you doing kept, to lose that money? Is it mostly just gambling, like in the pit, yeah, things like that? Yeah, basically. But um, I don't know. Like I just, you know, I, I I was doing everything I could to get into every tournament, you know. And base, and I was on my own. I don't have a backer. I mean, like so, which is also cool now because all, all that money is mine. But uh, like I was, and I just, I, I know that I can do. It. I I don't. I take these risks, you know, like like just putting just putting all my money on the line, like here and there. But because I, I know I'm gonna, I, you know how, I I know I can do it. So. I did it. I mean, I pick up, I pick up like tells on like like patterns of like every player like very fast. Like I pick up very fast. So, I like throughout that whole table, I had I had a stone read on, or I really did. I had like a read on like everybody, and um, it, it actually everybody thinks it was that hard of a play, and it is. And you have to have the balls to do it. But like, it wasn't that hard once you like figure it out. And um, what happened was I, I queen jack diamonds, and I was the only person like limping. Like, I wanted to play pots. Everybody was just pushing it. And I limped in on the button with Queen Jack of Diamonds. The, the Michael Graves, the kid that ended up beating me, he's, he limped in with 4-6. And then the big blind now, Sean Lumen, he was so aggressive. But he had so many cards, I found that now. And that's why he was so aggressive. But he re, he uh, raised it up with uh, Ace-Queen, I guess. And um, I, I, I called. And then Michael folded. The flop came... Uh, King seven four, I believe. Yeah, King seven four, rainbow. He checks it, and I'm just like, well, he, you know, he's got he's got to fire out of anything, so he he missed this flop. I bet out three hundred thousand, and he thought for a while and he called. So at this point, I'm just like, I, I really thought I was like, he's either got a, a, you know top set of kings or he's got nothing. So I, I wanted to see, the turn card came out an eight, and now he let off for four hundred thousand, and I'm just like, if he's gonna slow play the flop. He's gonna check raise the turn on me, so I was like, I was pot in my whole in my head the whole time. I was like, I was like, he he doesn't you know he did not he doesn't have that board. He didn't hit the board, so it, it just took me a little th to think about. It and I was like, do I have enough behind me? You know, I had one point one million, and the bet was four hundred thousand, so I had seven hundred thousand behind me. So I thought about it. I was like, do I have enough fold equity here? Like, I, I mean, I'm on a stone bluff here. I don't have a straight draw. I have nothing. Like, I'm queen high, you know. I mean, at best, like, at best for me is that, like, if he did call me, he had, like, tens or something, and I still have my queen jack, but I could be drawing dead. But it's all about, like, trusting yourself, trusting your reads. And, I mean, I thought it through, and I trusted my read, and, I mean, the only play for me was to go all in, and he mucked ace queen. I mean, I mean, if, I mean, it looks like a really hard, it really, really looks hard play, but I, uh, if you really figure it out, I mean, how the hand played out and how when he bet out the turn, it, did, it just didn't make sense. So, I mean... So I guess it's easy to say that you're playing for the win, absolutely. I mean, yeah, obviously yeah. you're sitting there, now before this event, like you said, you were broke. You're sitting there with the knowledge that you already earned over 100000 So at this point, the fact that, you know, you're risking another couple hundred thousand by making that play doesn't factor in you're going for the win? 150000 yeah. No, I mean, I, I play for the win. I mean, I win the bracelet. I mean, <laughs> That's that's what I, that's everybody knows that that's like the one thing I want. All my friends, I mean, I'm still disappointed, but I mean, like I'm on like I'm like cool now, like with it now. But I was really disappointed like the, the, the last two days now, and everybody's just like, what the what the hell's wrong with you? You know, just went three hundred eighty seven thousand. They don't understand that like when you get that far, you know. I mean, I think I have a right to be disappointed. I mean, I played my heart out. He was an extremely talented player. We'll be sure to keep you updated on his progress in the main event. Now, as far as the Bellagio Cup 3 goes, there's only one more preliminary event before the championship event on the 10th. That is a $2,500 buy-in no-limit event, and that begins tomorrow. Earlier today, Lizzie was down in the Fontana Lounge to get an update on how those things are going for the Bellagio Cup 3.
Card Flinger is here with your Bellagio Cup 3 coverage. Now we're in the Fontana Lounge. On the platform behind me is the final table of the last $5,000 buy-in no limit tournament of the Bellagio Cup 3 series. The chip leader going at this final table is Per Ummer and the short stack is JJ Liu. The total prize pool for this tournament is almost $300,000. First place is going to take home over $125,000, a Bellagio Gold bracelet and a $25,000 seat into the WPT Championship in April of 2008. The second to last $2,500 buy-in tournament began here today at 2 o'clock. There's a lot of well-known faces in the field, including Steve Daneman and John Gale. Now, this tournament actually boasts a bigger prize pool than the $5,000 event at the final table right now. The tournament had 136 entrants, of which 110 remain, that filled a prize pool of $330,000. For more details on the Bellagio Cup 3 tournaments, check out our video on Card Player TV. I'm Lizzie Harrison. That wraps up our show for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow to let you know what's going on here in Vegas in the poker world. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.